Good morning. I'm Terry Young, director of BMES Career Connections, and I'd like to thank you guys for joining us this year in Atlanta for BMES 2012 annual meeting. And thank you so much for getting up so early to join us for this session. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Um, it's going to be well worth it. We actually have a great lineup this year, today and tomorrow, of student and early career sessions. And in order for us to be able to continue to bring you these types of sessions, we ask that you take some time to complete the feedback form that most of you got when you came in. If you could just take the time to let us know what you're looking for, what you would like to see and hear from us at some of these sessions, as well as some of the regional conferences that will be coming in 2013. We'll be doing regional conferences in the Midwest, on the West Coast, and also Southeastern and the Mid-Atlantic. So look out for that, visit our website, and we'll start posting dates as we get closer to confirming schools that will be hosting our regional conferences. It's going to be on a Friday, and it's also, it's going to be one day, so we're going to try and have plenty of good content for you. But again, we just need your feedback to let us know what you want from BMBS as far as your career development is concerned. So today we're going to kick off our student and early career program with our session this morning. And we're going to start with effective interviewing. Our speaker today is Wanda Kaiser. And Wanda has a great biography. She's been pretty busy, actually. She's a certified professional career coach and a multi-credentialed resume writer with more than 14 years of experience and a proven track record of success in career coaching and cre crafting interview-winning resumes. Prior to founding Elite Resume Writing Services Incorporated in Atlanta, Georgia, Wanda had been a top operations and training development professional in a major Fortune 500 corporation for more than 21 years. Wanda is passionate about helping others realize their career potential. She takes pride in ranking among the very best and equipping career seekers with the skills and strategies necessary to win in today's tough job market. She has a list of credentials, and I'll just name a few. She has a Master of Business Administration and Advanced Leadership, Bachelor of Business Administration and Business Management, Certified Professional Career Coach, Certified Employment Interview Professional, and there are like six other credentials she has listed. So I'm not going to take up any more of our time today for this session, and please help me welcome Wanda Kaiser. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> well, good morning. It is very early this morning. I'm so glad to see so many faces here. Um, can you hear me okay? Can everyone hear me in the back very well? Well, great. So this morning, we are going to talk about effective interviewing skills, how to communicate effectively so that you can influence favorable hiring decisions while leaving lasting first impressions. Now, in a recent survey conducted by Decker Communications of Americans' greatest fears, 42% of the respondents reported that their greatest fear was speaking in public. Snakes rank second and death place seventh. So there is no wonder why most people fear interviews and they perform well below par. Employment meetings are situations for public speaking in private settings, which means then that an interview is an uncomfortable encounter for most individuals. Now, in my practice, I actually work with graduating seniors, mid-level professionals, as well as very senior level executives and entrepreneurs. So most of them are actually convinced that they interview well. And they think that interviewing is easy. And it can be if you're prepared. But when I speak with hiring managers, recruiters, and headhunters alike, they basically tell me that the average career seeker does not interview well at all. Which brings me to my point. 
Are you prepared to answer the following? Why should I hire you? Why do you feel that you are the best candidate for the job? How can you contribute to the advancement of an organization? So you must be prepared to answer these and other questions and be able to articulate your value in a compelling manner. So we're going to talk about the steps to effective interviewing. First off, I want you to be open to learning a variety of techniques that will help you to market and promote your talents, your skills, and your abilities. In order to impress an, a hiring manager, you must be well prepared. You need to be able, again, to articulate your value as a potential job candidate, as an employee. So the objective of this session is to help you to increase your knowledge of the interview process and also to help you in boosting your confidence so that you can be well prepared. So we're going to start out with this in hopes that you will take a personal skills inventory. And what I mean by that is you want to identify your knowledge-based skills, those skills that you've learned through your work or through your education. Examples of those may be your leadership skills, organizational skills, project management skills, technical expertise. Those are your knowledge-based skills. And then we want to list your transferable skills, those skills that can be utilized in other jobs or other industries. Examples of those might be your communication skills, your organizational skills. Are you creative? Are you innovative? Do you pay close attention to detail? Those would be your transferable skills. And then I want you to document your personal characteristics. Are you friendly? Do you work well alone? Are you self-motivated? Are you goal-oriented? Are you calm under pressure? These would be personal characteristics. After doing this, then you will be well prepared to match your qualifications to the employer's needs. Now, before you get started, I want you to make sure that your skills actually, that you actually have the skills necessary in order to perform the job. And then make sure, of course, that you meet the basic requirements of that, to do that job. When you're reviewing job requisitions and ads, notice key words that are used in job postings and requisitions. Begin to notice patterns. What qualifications are they asking for? What, what is a hiring manager looking for? Are there certain keywords or keyword phrases that are repeated? And then match your qualifications to those skills. After you've done that, well, let me just say, in doing this, this will help you to really get to know your value, okay? So you're studying the job requisition, and then you're matching up your skills to it. So let's take a look at an excerpt from a sample job requisition. Demonstrates the ability to understand and use basic biomedical test equipment. By the way, I took this from the BMES site. Uh, demonstrates thoroughness and attention to details. Makes the best use of time. Sets and achieves educational and job proficiency goals. Communicates clearly with users in patient care or while investigating reported malfunctions. So as you can see in the bolded areas, these are indicators to the core competencies that are necessary in order for you to perform that job. These are the qualifications that the hiring manager is looking for. So here's what you want to do, because this is the whole key to developing 
a compelling resume, a compelling cover letter, and also giving compelling answers during your interview. You want to utilize these words, this verbiage, during your interview to alert and to, in, to inform the hiring manager that you have the skills to do the job. Does that make sense? Thank you. All right, you didn't know you was gonna have to participate, did you? <laughs> okay. All right, so um, when you're doing this, and you have now, your resume is compelling, your cover letter is compelling, you've identified your skills, your talents, and your abilities, you know who you are, you've posted your resume out there, and you received an invitation to interview. And anxiety begins to set in. So now, what do you do? Well, the short answer to that, of course, is for you to practice, practice, practice. Okay, because if you are well prepared, then your confidence level is going to be high. And that's what you want, your confidence level to be high. And then I want you to think of the interview as a conversation. They're interviewing you, but you're interviewing them as well. Because in the end, you have a choice in the matter, whether you want to accept the opportunity or not. So that should help to ease that anxiety. And then I want you to plan ahead. Know where the interview is being held. And if you can find out who is conducting that interview, then that will help you also. And let me just give you a little bit of uh, a hint with this. What I mean by that, if you can find out who is actually facilitating or conducting that interview, you can find out a little bit about their communication style that will help you when you go into the interview. So when you go in, I want you to be very, very aware of everything that's going on, okay? So from the time that you actually go on to the property, you should consider yourself in an interview because anyone can provide information about you, your behavior, your mannerisms. So once you get on the property, game on. You know, put your game face on because we are wanting to make our best presentation. And with that said, the other part of it is, notice the interviewer. If you can't find out anything about them ahead of time, can you find out from them or can you watch their behavior? Are they more refined? Are they energetic? Are they just really laid back? So then you can alter your style of communicating when you're giving your responses. Okay, so that's what I mean by being very, very aware. Because if you have an energetic uh, interviewer, and then you're normally like laid back, then you wanna bring your energy level up a little bit. And so mirror their behavior, okay? Because typically we wanna be around people who are similar to us. And then I want you to visualize success. Create a picture in your mind of the outcome that you want to see happen. And that is, if the job is right, you wanna see yourself getting it, right? You wanna see yourself doing the job. You wanna see yourself as a part of the team. You may even want to um, weave in some of those type of uh, things in your response. If you're really interested in it, take the time to let the interviewer know that I am really interested in this opportunity and I can see myself doing this, okay? So additional ways to control anxiety and to release tension, of course, is to identify and document what really makes you anxious. Are there certain questions that make you feel anxious? Certain interview questions. Then that means you need to practice so that you can be prepared to answer those questions so that you can alleviate some of that anxiety. This will also help you to deal with your fears and perhaps change your way of thinking. One other tip may be to make positive affirmations. Send yourself positive messages or recite inspirational quotes. You know, whatever works for you. I am great. I can do this. Whatever it is that's gonna make you feel better, repeat those types of uh, 
quotes or affirmations to yourself. And then, you know, there's the deep breathing exercises. Or if you work out or you play basketball or you go running, do that before the interview, if you have time, to release some of that anxiety. All right, so we've talked about controlling the anxiety, and now we're actually going to get ready for the interview. Now, some of this may be basic information, but I'm not going to take anything for granted, because in my practice, I do uh, offer mock interviews, and I ask my clients to come in dressed as if they're going on an interview, and you would be so surprised at some of the things that I've seen. So for ladies, I want you to dress conservatively, a dress, suit, or slacks, and a blazer in, in a conservative pattern, style, and color is appropriate. You want to keep your jewelry simple. Avoid noisy or long dangling earrings and no more than one ring per hand. Your shoes should be polished. Always wear pantyhose, even in the summer. I know we don't really want to. <laughs> and no open-toed shoes or sandals. Your handbag should be in good condition. Make sure it's not overflowing with items and you're digging through it to try to find something. And don't carry multiple bags. Now, a portfolio similar to this, of course, most of you probably have one, is appropriate and acceptable because you want to make sure that you're taking notes as well. And then clean hair and makeup. I wouldn't suggest for those of you who do wear makeup that your makeup is heavy and your cologne is overpowering. A natural scent and a natural look is best. All right, men, a dark colored suit. for management <clears throat> positions is usually preferred. For less formal jobs, sports jacket and dress slacks are acceptable. Note that if the interview uh, involves a physical test of some sort, you want to ask ahead of time about the dress to make sure that you're wearing whatever is appropriate. A white or blue long sleeve shirt are traditional and safe choices. And of course, your tie should be complimentary, up to date, and also in good taste. Shoes should be polished, and your belts and buckles should be conservative. We don't want to have, you know, really big buckles. And no bulging wallets. You know, I, I had a law student just last week who came in for interview session, and I said, you know, when you come in next time dressed as if you're actually going on the interview, and he came in with the suit, but he had all of these things weighted down in his pockets. And I said, what is that? And he goes, oh, I have my phone sitting there. So when you go to the interview, leave your phone in the car or make sure it's not bulging out on you. And for God's sake, it should not be ringing, OK? So uh, one other thing is that uh, for men, of course, if you wear a beard or a mustache, you know, a close shave is a must. You want to keep it trimmed and keep it short. And an aftershave or cologne should be subtle. I want you to feel good in what you're wearing, because if you do, then your confidence is going to be high. Now, one other thing, too, I've heard from some hiring managers and uh, recruiters alike, is that the quality of your pen makes a difference. So you want to make sure that you have a nice quality pen and not one this the cap is chewed up. Um, <laughs> so take the time to do that. And if, in fact, you're the type that when you sit down and you like to cross your legs, now, your shoes are polished, but underneath there, they're really, really worn. Then it's best to keep them on the floor, OK? So be mindful of all of that, because people are just looking for something to screen you out. 
All right, so now let's just talk about the actual interview. Hiring managers want to know the following. Can you do the job? Do you have the skills, the knowledge, and the accomplishments to perform well in the position? Will you do the job? Are you interested? Have you displayed an interest in the job? And then, what's your attitude like? Will you fit in with the team or the organization? What's your personality like? So remember, I said you want to bring your A game. All of those things are important. But here's one thing I want you to, to always be mindful of. Regardless of whatever question you're being asked, the presidential question is, why should I hire you? So you want to continually give them information about why they should. And the why they should is from the requisition that they told you about, the qualifications, those keywords that we've talked about. Remember, you're going to use those in your cover letter, your resume, and in your responses during the interview. OK, so there are two basic types of interview questions. There's the standard traditional questions, the tell me about yourself, what is your greatest strength, what are your weaknesses, and then there's though, there are those behavioral-based questions. Give me an example of a time when you identified a potential problem, and you resolved it before it became a disaster. Tell me about a time when you did not meet your deadline with one of your assignments. So when you're um, getting ready to answer these types of questions, of course, you have to do your homework. You need to research the organization Know about that company. Know what the hiring manager is looking for and the qualifications, because you've done that. You've made sure that you meet those basic requirements. Take into consideration the competencies that they've asked for, because these are indicators that you will use those keywords during your responses in the interview. This is very, very important. Even so for your resume and your cover letter, because as you, most of you may know, they use tracking systems, right, for screening all of those thousands of resumes. And if those keywords are not there, you could be the best candidate for the job, but you will be looked over. So during the interview, use those same keywords. I want you to identify, document, and practice verbalizing success stories that are relevant to the employer's needs. And then I want you to be able to clearly articulate your skills and accomplishments by using the CAR format, challenge action result, utilizing the keywords at the same time. So the challenge would be if you're talking about you missed an assignment, you want to frame it by giving them you know, an overview before you begin telling them what you've done. So this is the situation. These are the actions that I took. And these, this is how I resolved it, or this is the results. And then you want to do that in a compelling manner, making sure that you weave in those keywords. Now, in today's job market, most of us are doing more with less. So we want to make sure that we're bringing in the right people before we actually invite you into an interview. So with that said, most of the time, the first interview will be the phone interview, which is basically used as a screening process to screen you out. <laughs> be ready at the appointed time and have all of your necessary items. I would suggest pen, paper, your resume, a copy of the job description. Make sure that you're in a quiet area without distractions and interruptions, including noises from televisions, ringing cell phones, 
pets, other children or siblings. And while you're on that phone, you want to speak slightly louder than you would normally speak to project your voice, remembering to speak clearly and without rushing. Listen to each question carefully. Make certain that you give your answer and then stop when you finish to let the interviewer know that you're done. Now, throughout the entire phone interview, I want you to maintain the energy in your voice, allowing your professionalism to come through, your self-confidence and your interest to, you know, throughout the entire interview. One suggestion that you may want to uh, take heed to is I actually suggest to my clients that you place a mirror beside the phone, somewhere where you can see yourself. Because if you can put on that inner smile, it will project in your voice, okay? Now, geographically, we're doing more also, and we're now using Skype and other type of applications. So um, with that, <clears throat> You want to be aware of your background. Think conservative, but not boring. A bookshelf behind you can create a professional image. Natural lighting is best. If you sit near a window, that will allow natural light to enter in. I would suggest that you avoid harsh or overhead lighting. Now, just because you're on Skype, you shouldn't be in your pajamas, okay? And I, and I know that you probably know this, but there are some that have done it. Uh, dress professionally, the same rules apply. And you want to log on early so that you can check your appearance ahead of time. When you are actually engaged in the interview, I want you to look directly into the camera because that will give the appearance of you having a face-to-face -face conversation. And again, practice, practice, practice. So you want, as soon as you find out that you're going to have an interview over Skype, then you want to practice it. Many of you may have already done this. But I would suggest if you have not and you're not comfortable, then you don't want the first time to be the day that you're going to have the interview. So you want to do this ahead of time, maybe with a friend or family member, and then ask them for feedback on how you look and how you sound. Now, to help you out uh, with that all-important icebreaker, tell me about yourself question, I would suggest that you develop an elevator speech. To describe your skills and qualifications, you can also use it during networking uh, functions, even conferences simple, similar to this. If you're not familiar, you're, you're not aware of you know, your uh, peers, you can use that. And you can also, and you should also use it with someone who you may want to get to know. As Terry mentioned, I am a certified employment interview and career coach, multi-credential resume writer, Six Sigma green belt, and a few other things. My clients range from graduating seniors, mid-level professionals, and very senior level executives and entrepreneurs. The services that I provide are development of interview winning resumes, job search strategy, and facilitation of laser focused career coaching sessions. That's what I do. Previously, I worked for a major Fortune 500 telecommunications company, and my strengths are in helping job seekers maximize their career search potential, helping them to realize their career goals. That's who I am. That's my elevator speech. So I would suggest that you develop yours, practice it, and know it. Because you are the product, and in order for you to sell yourself, you have to know your value and be able to articulate it in a compelling manner. Remember, the passion sells, too when you're giving your responses. Not that just they're canned, but that you're passionate about a job or about what you are 
wanting to do. You also want to be prepared to ask, ask some questions during the interview. You know, why is the position open? Is this a new division? You know, what happened to the person that was there? Maybe they might give you some information. You know, what's the reason for this? You know, is there a certain reason why this position is open? What are your immediate goals for this position? This will give you some information about what you may have to do in the upcoming future. How will my performance be evaluated? How is success measured? How will I know if I'm doing a great job? What career progression do you see for this position? You don't want to get into a dead end job, so you want to find out what advancement opportunities are available. What qualifications would you expect the successful candidate to possess? Now, I know that you've already studied the job requisition and you know the qualifications that are stated, but then there are also some times when they will share desired qualifications that may not be listed. So if there are additional interviews, then that will give you some more insight and some more key words <laughs> that you can use for the next level of interviews. Now, before the interview ends, I want you, if you're interested, to express that interest. It should be showing in your mannerisms as well. Thank the interviewer for his or her time. Also, if you haven't done so already, you want to ask about the next steps in the interviewing or hiring process. I wouldn't want you to leave without knowing when a decision is going to be made, and if all candidates interviewed will be notified of any decisions. Because sometimes that just doesn't happen, and you're sitting around waiting, or you're wondering what happened, should I call them, should I not? Just ask. And then you want to ask for the interviewer's business card to ensure that you have the correct name, title, and spelling so that you can send your thank you letter. And you should send that thank you letter within 24 hours. Now, I haven't mentioned here group interviews, but the only difference is, is that when you're in a group or a panel, you want to make certain that you look at every person that's sitting at that table. Don't shrink back. Remember, it's an interview. You're interviewing them just as well as they are interviewing you. And then also make certain that you have their names as well. And it's okay to ask. So the interview follow-up. You want to evaluate your performance. What went well? What questions did I answer very well? What will I do differently the next time? Did I appear relaxed and self-confident? Did I present my skills and experience effectively using relevant examples to the position? What questions do I need to improve upon? What will I do differently the next time? Did I talk too much or not enough? Did you use the opportunity to sell yourself as the right person for the job? And remember, we talked about this, and I want to keep driving this home. you got to go back to those qualifications and those key words and, and your success stories. And then were you able to elicit information from the interviewer about the company and the position? They may share additional information based on your questions. Well, that concludes my portion of the uh, presentation. Um, what questions can I answer for you today? I think there are mics. Mm -hmm. 
So with group interview thank you letters, is it best to write to, is this on? Yes. Is it best to write to all the group members that were in your interview or to one specific individual? Well, if you take the time and they share the information, if all of them are ask, asking you questions, then you want to send them a personal. And an email is fine. Okay. Um, my penmanship is horrible, so I prefer <laughs> sending, you know, I would prefer sending an email, but for those of you who might send a handwritten note in your penmanship as well, then make sure that the card, the, you know, just like you uh, buy quality paper for your resume, you want to do the same thing for the thank you card, because I've heard some hiring managers make decisions based on the, the thank you card, so quality there, but to answer your question, I would send them to each person because you want to make sure that you have their, their names and, you know, all of that and their titles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks a lot for the great tips. Um, I had a question about the minimum qualifications. Mm -hmm. A lot of the jobs that I've looked at have some amount of industry experience that they would like you to have, but as a PhD student, uh, I have a lot of education and I've put in a lot of time in the field, but I don't have industry experience per mm -hmm. se. So is that something where people understand that pursuing a graduate degree mm -hmm. is experience and is that something that I could potentially submit to or do you really need to meet the minimum experience? Right. So if you have not just the work experience, but maybe the education in it, then you can utilize that. Make sure that you put your courses, your relevant courses that will correspond to what the hiring manager is looking for. So absolutely, you can do that as well. Um, I have two questions um, for the follow-up letter. If you kind of forget to send one the day after, is there like a too late of time to send a follow-up letter? No, there isn't, but to you, if you do that. <laughs> so I would say um, definitely go ahead and send it if it's you know not the within the 24 hours, but yes, go ahead and do it. And also for filling for the whatever, phone interviews, when they ask you the question, should you allow yourself a, probably like a minute to think about, or like, so I had one last week and I was very on, jump on the gun to answer the questions, it didn't really give it much thought. Mm -hmm. Should I give it more time before I like reiterate, uh, respond? Yes, and so there's a way you can kind of put a pause in there and say, you know what, that's a really great question. Let me think about that for just a moment while you're formulating your thoughts. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I also have uh, two quick questions. One thing is about the um, knowledge on the subject. Say you do have experience in um, the school, like schooling of a specific style, like we use SolidWorks at our school, mm -hmm. but the industry wants more experience in that. Should you express that you do have some experience, but maybe not to the extent that they do, like right. that they want? Right. So for you, I'm... Going, I'm, I'm going to go back to your resume or your cover letter. So you want to make sure that that information is in there, that you do have this experience, and you're willing to learn. Okay. You're a quick learner. You're a fast learner. Okay. And okay. can you be overdressed for an interview? Um, I would err on the way of being overdressed than underdressed. Okay. So just remember to take your time to kind of find out about the organization before you actually go. But... The tips that I gave you on, for the guys is what I want you to follow. Remember, management, a dark suit. If it's more mid-level, uh, technical, then dress slacks, a shirt and a tie. Right. Thank okay? you. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, thanks Hi. again. Um, my question is, as employers start to weed out people more and more, I've noticed a tendency to have off-site skills interviews mm -hmm. um, that aren't necessarily with company... Uh, like company personnel, but with an outside company who sends the information. So how should you present yourself for that? Pretty much the same way because they are going to sell you. So you have to sell yourself to them. So it's the same thing. It's just another screening process that they've hired this outside organization to find the very best fit for their organization. So again, bring your A game every time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just have a dress question. So for women, you said like polished shoes. Do you mean like we have to buy like patent leather or like super shiny shoes or does it matter so much? No, what I mean by that, and you, you guys, and I'm only saying this because I've seen it all. What I'm saying is they shouldn't be run over. 
you know, decent is what I'm talking about. And it's okay if you, if you need to buy some polish to polish them, but what I'm saying is just make sure that they're decent. I don't want you to feel as though you have to go out and buy something because we understand that most of you are students, but at the same time, you want to make a good impression. And do we have to wear pantyhose under pants, or can we wear, like, trouser socks? I know it's kind of weird, but... Yeah, that's fine. Trouser socks is okay, fine. Cool. I was just thinking more of a dress. Okay? Hi there. Um, I've heard about, and in fact, I've been told myself before, um, that I was overqualified for positions, uh, or that, you know, the company thought that uh, you know, the position wasn't good enough for me. Uh, is, is that code for something? Is there a way to sort of uh, defend against that? Or is that, so you're what, are, what are your thoughts here? Right, so you're coming across in your resume, your cover letter is very, very strong, and they've taken note of that. So in the industry that I work, we talk about maybe dumbing down a little bit, you know, not making, you know, utilizing um, accomplishments to make certain that you're giving them what they want, but not too much. Okay, and then during the interview, you can let them know that your interest in this opportunity. Just let them know that you're very interested. If it comes up during that time, then just let them know that you're very interested and why you're interested. Is it because of perhaps um, being a part of the organization that you've always wanted to work for? You know, so there's a way for you to do that, but it is in making sure that you don't come across too strong in the resume or the cover letter. Is that something to be more cautious about for, say, entry-level positions? Um, I would say that you want to make certain that you tell the right story. Remember we talked about the success stories that go along with what the employer is looking for. And maybe in the words that you use, just bring them down a notch. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, thank, thanks for the presentation. It was very informative. Uh, my question is, many times at the time of application or during the interview, they bring up a question that uh, what is your expected salary? Uh, do you think that's an important parameter for screening? And if so, how, what's the best way to answer that question? I'm sorry. Can you slow it down for me just a little bit, maybe get a little bit closer right. to so, the mic? Right, uh, so my question is, uh, many times at the interview, they ask the question that what is the expected salary? Oh, salary. Yeah. So oh. is that an important parameter in screening? And if so, uh, what would be the best way to best answer way that to question? Best way to answer that? So here's my thing with salary. The best time to talk about that is after you've gotten the job. They should bring it up and not you. Okay, so if they do and they have brought it up, then you've done your research, remember? You know what the organization will pay. You know what the market will bear. And then you have what you're looking for. So there are three different figures here. What they pay, what the market will bear, and what you need. So then you can simply say, you know, based on my research, I understand that the salary for someone in similar positions as, the, and as, as this pays this amount. So with that said, I would be interested in entertaining a salary that would commensurate with my skills and my abilities based on the market, okay? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning. Good um, morning. Um, we're all engineers, um, so we're generally going to be applying for engineering positions. So my question is, is it inappropriate during the interview if they ask you, like, what, what's your objective? Is it inappropriate to, be, to move away from engineering to say I'm interested in sales and marketing to sort of, if you want to transition into a different field within the company? Okay, but you're interviewing for? I'm interviewing for an engineering position, but in the future I want to move to marketing and sales. Should you just not even bring it up? Don't bring that up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Get the job and then position yourself to move into marketing and sales. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you Good for morning. the informative presentation. I have a question about the phone interview. Okay. It is The culture is so diverse now, so there are chances that I will... I might have an interviewer though, who has strong accent. I'm one of those who are um, insensitive about the accent. So how can I well, ask the interviewer to repeat or slow down in a respectful way? But also, I want to express that I have the communication sufficiency right. that mm -hmm. I can 
like I can mm -hmm. compete on the position. Okay. Well, now certainly we today we do and and we should appreciate diversity. So that's what makes great companies great is the diversity. So you're appreciated for that. I would suggest to you that you say that you know, wow, I'm really you know, this is great. I'm really interested in this opportunity. Um, however, I didn't quite understand the question. Would you remind repeating it for me? Okay? And, but always make sure that your confidence is coming through and you're displaying interest because they're going to be able to read that in your mannerisms. So you remember I said your passion will sell. So sometimes slightly leaning forward will let others know, and we're moving off into something, you know, that neuro-lingual programming thing. But just let them know that you're interested, and I'm sorry, but I didn't quite understand the question. Would you remind repeating it? And then just kind of, you know, and I think from that, they will be able to understand if you're kind of listening closely, you know, practicing that active listening, then they will be able to understand that Maybe I might need to slow it down or speed it up or speak a little bit louder. So it is okay that I ask repetitively, <laughs> like if I didn't understand the second question, can I ask them to slow down and uh, repeat that for me? Right, yeah. Okay. Would you mind just slowing down just a little bit? I'm, I'm really interested in the opportunity. And that way they'll be able to understand. So that it, it, don't worry about that. It does happen. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. For the um, behavior-based questions in an interview, if I get a question and I have a great example of something I did, but it was maybe for an organization that I'm involved with outside of work or school, mm -hmm. is it appropriate to use that? Yes. As long as you can show that you have the core competencies that they're looking for. Remember the attention to detail, you utilize your exceptional communication skills whatever that may be. So just weave those in that, res in that particular situation and you'll be fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any recommended for strategies for dealing with uh, completely getting stumped on a question in an interview, especially like behavioral questions when you can't come up with a good example of a, uh, an example? So remember that homework that I talked about? <laughs> <laughs> getting your examples ready, several of them, and practice them so that you will be prepared. So you want to be able to go in your back pocket and pull it out, OK? And if you need to think for a moment, it's OK. Put a comma there. Thank you for that. Give me just a moment. If you don't mind, give me just a moment. And then begin. But the biggest part is to prepare. So go back through your accomplishments. You've studied that requisition, and you know what the qualifications that they're looking for. And then from your accomplishments, pick those and be able to articulate them, OK? And then the other part, one other thing too, um, and this is for everyone, it's expected for you to be a little nervous. Remember in the beginning, I said 42% of the people who were uh, completed the survey said that public speaking was their greatest fear. Uh, so when writing a thank you letter, are there key words that you should include um, to get a point, to get across the valid point that you are interested in the company? That's a very good question. Um, and because in my practice, I typically teach my clients that, you know, the thank you letter is not just, you know, thank you for your time, but it's also your time to get them to remember you, to express your interest in the job. And also to be able to, if you forgot something during the interview, that's the time to bring it up. In addition to those things that we discussed during the interview, I also have these skills. So the thank you letter is actually a strategy. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um, I was wondering that you said one of the behavioral or traditional questions was, they would ask you about a weakness. How do you answer that question without using cliches or being dishonest? So you, you want to turn that around, of course, and make that a strength. But one thing is I want you to be mindful of, um, and then I'll go back and answer your question. When they are talking about, you know, what's your weakness? 
And then they'll, you know, sometimes some interviewers will say, and what else? <laughs> and what else? And I've heard people continue to go on. So listen, this is it. For you, <laughs> you may be, um, you know, sometimes you may be your own worst critic because you want to perform well. You want to make a good impression. So, but whatever it is that you've done, you know, but I've learned in my experience that, you know, making sure that good is good enough is good enough without being obsessing over something. So you want to tell it in a, in a, and to make it a strength at the same time. Because who wants to do rework? We want it to be done right the first time, right? So it's okay to mention that, you know, if I have an opportunity to um, maybe hone my uh, organizational skills in that, you know, I'm usually very organized, but maybe I obsess over some things. You understand what I'm saying? Just kind of turn it around so that it can come across as a strength, what you've learned from it in other words, because we're going to make mistakes, we're human beings, but what can we learn from those mistakes? And that's what you want to think about. You know, how can I turn my weakness around or tell them what I've learned from it? Because that's what you're doing. You're just beginning, you know, your career or preparing to begin. Okay, thank okay? you. I appreciate you being here. Um, your response to the previous question is kind of along the same lines of the question I have. I'm wondering uh -huh. how concise should we be when we answer questions, especially the behavioral questions? Okay, is there an underlying, <laughs> what's the underlying factor to that question here? Uh, no, I mean, I often can see myself just going on and on and on about anything. So I, I, sometimes I don't know when to shut up. Okay, so that's a good question. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that. So brevity is key, okay? So especially if they start looking around, you know, Remember I talked about being very, very aware because you want to make sure that you keep their attention. So um, here's a good place for me to say this. If you notice that they're not paying attention to you anymore, use your voice, you know, to project, maybe bring it down a little bit, bring it up again to keep them, you know, um, paying attention to you. But make sure, because I've coached clients like that, oh my God, and it's like, okay, no, stop. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you answer the question and be concise. But so I don't you got to practice that. But for better or worse, people seem to still be listening to what I'm saying, and they're constantly writing things down. And I don't think they're just drawing pictures or doodles. Right. So. Well, they may not be. <laughs> okay. But that's something. That's an opportunity for you to work on. Okay. So during your practice time, stick to the facts. Just a brief overview. Your actions without going all around. <laughs> but how okay. about a time? Is it 30 seconds is all you should need for a behavioral question? I would probably say no more than a, a okay. minute or two. Okay? Appreciate it. Just make sure that they're engaged and you can see that from their behavior. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, on the behavioral questions, if you're answering and then you actually think of a better scenario that proves the point, should you switch to the second scenario or should you stick with the first scenario and try to back it up more and have it stronger? Um, if you find that when you're answering a question and you want, you've thought of another one, just say, you know what, I have the best, I, I just thought of a better example. And just go with it. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Remember it's a conversation, okay? Yes, I was given a behavioral question which I found to be where I sat in a bit of the gray area where it was, would you prefer to work in a team dynamic or do you prefer to work on your own? Personally, I don't have a preference, but how would you answer that if they obviously want you to pick one? Well, so which one do you prefer? It depends upon the situation. I like working in a team when I'm working on something that's particularly interdisciplinary because I'm not necessarily better at electrical or computer because I'm more of a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, and see, I'm like this. I can do both. I can work well alone, and I can work well as a team. So you can give examples of both. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when
when you're answering a question and they want you to go on like the weakness question, how do you tell them that you don't want to continue like you're done <laughs> answering? But and tell them in a it. nice way. <laughs> you, and that's it. You know, you, you frame it. So you give them, you know, whatever your weakness is. <laughs> and we're, we're imperfect people, so we, we're, we have some opportunities that we're working on. And, and that's it. So you don't have to keep going? No, okay. and you shouldn't keep going. <laughs> okay, because remember, that's a, that's a ploy. So you just, you know, share whatever uh, opportunity, that, and I, I like to think of it that way, and then, and that's it. Okay? Um, good morning. Uh, if the interviewers have said that you've fallen short, whether your GPA or medically or socially or having uh, not enough qualifications for the position, how do you push that aside um, during the interview and during the follow-up letter? Okay, so during the interview, they've, they've actually said something like this? No, to no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it, it's never been said, but I've always wondered, like, if they were asking me, well, you have a, you know, like, a, not necessarily a low GPA, but like, like the person said before, that not mm -hmm. having any industry business. Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, um, right now I'm doing the positions, and I had to put in my medical uh it's like my medical testing or mm -hmm. all the things like that. And I have, uh, there's something wrong with my leg. It's nothing, I have a physical limitations. However, I had to write a letter saying, stating that, you know, I could still jog and all those other kind of things. Oh, but okay. how, you know, just, I guess like a broad question, because I don't know anybody else's life, but mm -hmm. how do you push that aside in a follow-up letter? Because I just, I, re I just wrote one last night a letter stating like what I can do physically, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how appropriate that is or? Mm -hmm. Based on what you're? Yeah. You, can you maybe see me afterwards? Um, but I wanna talk about, let me just address it, but I wanna make sure that I look at yours individually as well. Okay. Um, but what I want you to do, if there are certain areas that you feel that you're weak in, then you still wanna make sure that you express your interest and your ability mm -hmm. to rise to the occasion. Okay. You know, and be able to do so quickly. Okay. Okay? But I would like to see your letter. If you okay. Have it with you. I do have one question. Um, so what if the job is uh, very involved and requires a lot of um, hours, and during the interview, um, the interviewer actually asks about your personal family situation. So are you married? Do you have any children? Or are you planning on having any children anytime soon? So. Mm -hmm. How do you handle those types of questions if you're not really comfortable right. uh, even? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Those are illegal. <laughs> um, but I would say that if you're interested in the job, I would answer them. But then once you get the offer, it will be up to you whether or not you accept it or not once you do your research. But those are questions that they should not be asking you. But what do you do when, when they do ask them in an interview? I'm sorry? Uh, what do you do if they do ask them in an interview? Um, so, like I say, if you're comfortable answering them, and I would suggest that you do answer them if you want the job. You know, it's best to go ahead and answer them, and it does happen sometimes. Um, however, as I mentioned, you should, they should not be answering, asking those types of questions. And if it just goes against everything in you and you just don't want to answer them, then you're gonna to have to make a decision because they may make a decision as to not bring you on. But it should not happen. That should not happen, okay? There are certain questions that are just not right and they're not legal. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>